Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the abstract that I'm going to present today is cabozantinib plus atezolizumab or cabozantinib alone in patients with advanced small, non-small cell lung cancer. This is the data from the cohort 7 and 20 from the Cosmo, Cosmic 021 study. So we know that immune checkpoint inhibitors is an integral part of treatment in non-small cell cancer in the advanced setting. Uh, the resistance to immune checkpoint inhibitors eventually develops and uh, it is multifactorial with various mechanisms. And one of the in, uh, mechanisms that has been uh, studied and on, which, on the basis of which this study is based is the role of angiogenesis modulating factors on the immune system and uh, on tumor, uh, tumor uh, immunity. So this is a rationale for uh, using the combination of cabozantinib with uh, immunotherapy that the authors had uh, presented uh, for the study. So cabozantinib targets pathways which are associated with the tumor immune suppression. We know that cabozantinib is a multikinase inhibitor. It has effect on the VEGF receptors, MET inhibition, RET inhibition, AXL inhibition and also inhibits TAM kinase. And through these various pathways, it uh, uh, targets path pathways which uh, cause immune resistance to checkpoint inhibitors. So this study is a phase 1b study that was designed and with multiple cohorts across all solid tumors. Uh, so non-small cell cohort was one of the cohorts, the others being bladder, prostate and uh, renal cell carcinoma. Uh, the cohort 7 was the initial uh, cohort that was uh, uh, studied where they combined cabozantinib at the dose of 40 milligrams once a day with atezolizumab every three weeks and they included stage 4 non-squamous non-small cell lung cancer with uh, radiographic progression on or after one prior immune checkpoint inhibitor for metastatic disease and patients should have received uh, less, than, less than or equal to two prior lines of anti-systemic therapy. They excluded uh, driver mutations EGFR ALKROS and BRAF and their primary endpoint for the phase 1b study was objective response rates. Uh, they presented this data in 2020 at ASCO with the initial 30 patients and based on the response that they had, they uh, expanded the cohort 7. At the time of expansion uh, for another additional 50 patients to make a total of 80 in the cohort, they also added a cohort 20. Although this is not a randomized study, they then randomized the patients between the cohort 7 and cohort 20 which was single agent cabozantinib. The primary objective of the study was objective response rates. These are the results. Uh, just to note a few things, though most are balanced in uh, both the arms. The <coughs> PDL1 status was available for around 74% of patients in the cabozantinib atezolizumab arm and 90% uh, of the patients in the single agent cabozantinib arm. There was a one fourth of the patients did not have PDL1 data available. And of all the patients that were included, 68% were PDL1 positive. Uh, more than 80% of patients in both arms had received prior platinum-based chemotherapy. And the most recent uh, chemotherapy or most recent systemic therapy regimen in both arms included immune checkpoint inhibitors in some form, either as a single agent or in combination with chemotherapy or other agents. And uh, these are the uh, results for the primary objective, that is the objective response rate, which you can see is around 19%, that is 15 out of 81% had a partial response in the combination arm. And then they looked at it based on the PDL1 expression. And if you look at the, uh, the response rates, as well as the, the disease control rate, the progression-free survival, the duration of response, and overall survival, there is a trend to uh, having better responses with better survival outcomes as the PDL1 goes higher, and including the PDL1 unknown population where we don't know the PDL1 status uh, did better than those who had PDL less than 1%. The cabozantinib arm had poor response rates uh, for CR0, 6% uh, had a partial response, 60% had a stable disease, and 8% of eight patients out of 31, that is a quarter of the patients in uh, this uh, cabozantinib single agent arm were allowed to cross over. This waterfall plot again shows the response rates where 76% had some form of tumor reduction uh, in the combination arm and uh, this is the duration of response where the two patients had uh, an ex exceptionally longer duration up to 125 weeks, the others had shorter durations of response. Cabozantinib only two patients had a good partial response uh, and uh, the rest either had stable disease or disease progression. 
So these are the progression free survival curves for both the arms. Uh, this is the progression free survival for all patients in the combination arm which was 4 months. But when they selected the PDL1 positive it improved to 4.7 months and up to 5.4 months in the PDL1 unknown status. Similarly the uh, overall survival for the combination in all patients was 6.8 whereas it was 9.4 months in the cabozantinib alone arm. Uh, this is including the patients who crossed over. However, the authors have not yet uh, put out the data of uh, details of the patients who crossed over in any public domain. And again, uh, with the PDL1 positivity, the overall survival increased. Uh, these were the safety uh, data. Uh, the known toxicities of cabozantinib and atrazolizumab were seen. Uh, no new safety signals were identified. There were uh, some grade uh, 5 events like fatal pneumonitis in the immunotherapy arm and a GI bleed in the cabozantinib arm. Out of the AEs of special interest, that is the immune mediated AEs, uh, most of them uh, included laboratory abnormalities or asymptomatic uh, disease, whereas the serious AEs were less uh, frequent. So the safety was uh, comparable to previous data available. And this is what the authors concluded. Uh, they concluded that patients who had the combination, they had encouraging clinical activity. They also said that the cabozantinib alone arm had modest activity and the responses were irrespective of the PDL1 expression. However, when we look at the data closely, there are certain questions that arise. The first one is, uh, can we really say, uh, as per the author's conclusion, that they will benefit in all patients, irrespective of the PDL1 expression? Uh, the second question is, will the combination of this TKI and atezolizumab reflect or be replicated in larger populations? Is there going to be a benefit? Uh, we know that a large chunk of the population had, uh, of the combination, that is 26% had no PDL1 status known. And this, this could have been the uh, population which might have had patients with higher PDL1 expressions, uh, leading to better outcomes uh, that were seen in these groups. However, this study was a phase 1B study which was not designed to look at survivals in, such pa in these patients and it is a very small number of patients. Number of patients with retomet not reported. Uh, single agent cabozantinib really in an unselected population of non-small cell lung cancer with a 6% uh, PR uh, should be concluded as a real benefit, not known. And a lot of other details that are not available yet. So we need to wait for full results. There are two other studies. One phase two study of cabozantinib with nivolumab uh, in non-small cell cancer with uh, lung cancer compared to standard chemotherapy and the same regimen compared to docetaxel of which the results are not in, uh, available yet, the full details. So we need to look at uh, the full detailed results and probably this is an interesting signal that we need to explore. However, there's just one update that I want to mention that last week uh, Ipsen uh, Though the results have not been print published or presented in any major conference, Ipsen uh, provided a press release saying that the CONTACT-01 study, that is the phase 3 study evaluating the same regimen compared to docetaxel in second line and beyond setting, did not meet the primary endpoint of overall survival. So this seems like the phase 1 data has not translated into uh, meaningful phase 3 uh, results in the phase 3 trial. However, we need to look for the further detailed uh, uh, that we need to look for. So with this, I conclude. Thank you for the opportunity.